Five years ago today, two Colorado teens woke up and got ready for school, like millions of high school students do every day. However, instead of packing books and lunch, Eric Harris and Daryl Klebold packed four guns, several knives, and numerous explosive devices. By lunchtime, 12 students and a teacher were fatally wounded at Columbine High School. But on this anniversary, the issue of guns in school has risen again, and school gun clubs are the flashpoint. The NRA Foundation, a charitable arm of the National Rifle Association, has donated more than $60 million to organizations and schools for student gun clubs. With us now to discuss this controversial program, from Seattle, the executive director of the Second Amendment Foundation, Alan Gottlieb, and from Washington, D.C., where he directs the Violence Policy Center, Josh Sugarman. We also invited the NRA, the NRA Foundation, and regional NRA members to participate this morning. All of them declined. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Josh, I want to start with you. It's been five years since Columbine. What do you think of the NRA Foundation's support of these school gun clubs? Well, we oppose these programs for two reasons. The first is that I think there's a consensus in America that we don't want guns in schools. And I think when you look at the 1990s and the school shootings, there's a reason for that consensus. The second is that you have to recognize that this is probably a broad-based campaign by the NRA, by the gun industry, to basically sell guns to kids. And the uh, fact is they're doing this because gun ownership in America is decreasing, and they need to find new customers. But the fact of the matter is, if you accept the youth gun culture as envisioned by the NRA, by the gun industry, the events like Columbine are going to happen. And we think most Americans, in fact, we know most Americans won't accept this. Alan, why do schools need these kind of clubs that the NRA Foundation is supporting? Well, these are great clubs and great activities. They're all legitimate. They're all good safety training, teaches competitive shooting, skeet and trap competition. There's nothing wrong with these clubs. In fact, in the whole time this has been going on, none of these guns have been misused. None of these kids committed any crimes. The people that oppose these programs just hate guns, period. Don't want anybody using a firearm, even for legitimate purposes. These programs keep kids off the street. Uh, it helps them get, get scholarships to colleges for shooting teams in college. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. It's legitimate activity. Some of these kids are going to end up being stars on ESPN shooting programs in the future. I don't know why Josh could oppose this unless you're so extreme that you don't want anybody to own a firearm for any legitimate purpose. But, Alan, considering the anniversary of Columbine, can't you see why some people are upset? Well, I don't know who's upset besides Josh Sugarman. I mean, this is being done with parental consent. The kids have to have parents sign forms to be able to be in these clubs and use the firearms. The guns aren't sold to the kids. They're safely stored with adult supervision. This is the way you want to see firearms being used in our society. Josh, what's your response to that? Well, I think everybody agrees that Columbine, to use Alan's word, upset America, as did the other school shootings. And Alan's response is very common when they dare that guns will somehow work as a magic talisman to create responsibility and good work ethics and things like that. But the reality is, if you look at one of the uh, school shootings that occurred in the 90s, 1998 in Jonesboro, um, Andrew Golden knew guns. He uh, was well versed in guns. His father taught him combat pistolry. And all that meant when he and a fellow classmate opened fire on uh, four school children and killed them, that they were better shots. The bottom line is that up until the moment those kids opened fire, they were the perfect NRA children. And I think most parents, most educators say it's too high a risk. Alan, how did the school gun clubs get around the gun-free zones and the policies that have been established to prevent other Columbine? Well, first, Josh had to just go back 14 years to find one incident, which is surely not statistically meaningful. But the, way, not me, but, but, the, but the way nobody, nobody has to get around any laws, the way the laws are written for legitimate purposes, for school safety, for shooting programs, for legitimate training, uh, all that is legal, both under federal law and under most state laws. And that's everything, all laws are being complied with when these programs are, are taking effect. So, Josh, if these programs, as you're saying, are really about safety and sportmanship, sportmanship what's wrong with that? These programs aren't really about safety and the shooting sports. They're about marketing guns to children, working to create a youth gun culture. And I'll add one more issue that many schools have faced across this country, and that's the lead risk posed by this type of activity, not just to the participants, but also to the facilities themselves. And across the country, schools have faced uh, broad concerns of uh, liability regarding uh, lead poisoning. These programs are being done in, in shooting ranges indoor that have facilities to screen out the lead for, from the air. They're being done in outdoor ranges that everybody else uses. Josh, when you have to go to lead poisoning as one of your issues, you're really kind of weak. Hey, Alan. Well, actually, no. I mean, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead, Josh. 
No, actually, it's not weak. We're talking about clear risk to children from lead. We've done studies on this. We invite your uh, viewers to go to our website, www.vpc.org, to see the research. The bottom line, the only people benefiting from these activities are the gun industry, the National Rifle Association. There's nothing wrong with that. They're legitimate organizations. They're legitimate businesses. Well, if you're willing to acknowledge that this is all about marketing guns to children, at least we agree on that. I would argue that to make believe it's something else is deceptive. I think parents should know these facts. Josh, why does the NRA have to sponsor these clubs? Why can't the schools come up with the money on their own? The NRA is sponsoring these clubs because they've launched a $100 million campaign to bring kids into the gun culture. Now, for the industry, it's because they need new customers. Uh, gun owners are dying off in America, they're getting older. But for the NRA, it's basically to have uh, political troops with the gun control ballots that lie ahead to make sure they can ensure their political power. So now we're getting to where Josh is really coming from. He doesn't like the idea that people might own guns because then they might vote or support their right to own the firearms, which he wants to eradicate. Now we've gotten down to the bottom line. Josh, last the comment? The bottom line is that kids are being placed at risk. You can look at Columbine and say kids and guns is a good mix. And really virtually everyone except the NRA, people like Alan Gottlieb and the gun industry agree on this point. All right, Josh Sugarman, Alan Gottlieb, thanks so much Thank for you. joining us. We're not going to solve this Thank this you. morning. We appreciate waking up with us.